Good evening from New York. I'm Lawrence O'Donnell. Last spring, when the Democratic establishment decided to turn its back on a congressman and former three-star Navy admiral who sought the Democratic Senate nomination in Pennsylvania, he won anyway, defeating Republican-turned-Democrat Arlen Specter. It might have been the best move the party leaders made this campaign season. That's because in an anti-establishment year, Pennsylvania Congressman Joe Sestak can claim he stood up to the Washington crowd and is now nearly tied with his Republican opponent, Pat Toomey, in the race for the Senate. Joe Sestak is now one of the great hopes for Democrats who are fighting to stop a tidal wave of Republican victories on November 2nd. Uh, Congressman, how often do you wake up now in the final stretch of the campaign and gaze across that border to Delaware and wish you got lucky and got a nutty Tea Party candidate like Christine O'Donnell to run against? <laughs> I'm pretty fortunate as it is. I have the intellectual forefather of the extreme fringe of the Tea Party movement, Congressman Toomey. I mean, imagine somebody who actually advocates no taxes for corporations and privatizing Social Security. I think those policies are pretty extreme on their own. Now, when you were running in the primary, uh, did it help you or hurt you that the Democratic establishment, including the president and the vice president, backed your opponent? They, they, uh, you, you were running then as kind of the anti-Democratic establishment uh, uh, candidate back in the primary. Was that helpful to you? I don't think it made a difference in that race, and I don't think it's quite that much difference in this one either. Look. Pennsylvanians are the most commonsensical of people I've ever met. They're actually looking at who they want to represent them. Do they actually want somebody whose values came from Wall Street, wants no corporation taxes, actually believes made in America is an unfortunate tendency? Uh, and so they want to know if they've got a representative who's going to actually serve them mainstream. The small businesses should prosper with tax credits and let's worry about our educational opportunity. No, don't, we independent Pennsylvanians and the common sense we're noted for are going to focus upon the two candidates and with such a stark contrast they're going to go with somebody who's in the mainstream and that's why I'm very confident. What has changed in the politics of Pennsylvania since Barack Obama did so well there? Well, people have been slammed. Their lives ripped apart and without any question they're rightly upset and they want to hold someone accountable but what they want is to believe again to trust again and so obviously they're looking at saying who's in charge but they're also wise enough to say how do we get here and so they're not going to vote for a wolf in sheep's clothing, and that's what Congressman Toomey is. I mean, he went to Congress, helped dismantle the safeguards in Wall Street, went through the revolving door of politics, become a lobbyist for a Wall Street-founded firm. Now he wants to go back and do more damage by privatizing Social Security and repealing the safeguards that we put on Wall Street, where he wants to gamble again. So at the end of the day, that's really, and I know I keep coming back to it, is what's going to prevail here, common sense. Now, you said uh, to the New York Times, I'm quoting, I would argue my party began getting off the track when it made a political calculation for the 60th vote on health reform. What do you mean by that? Yes. Yes. Look, we didn't seize the White House through political calculation. We did it through audacity. We did it by doing the right thing. Like a captain of a ship when I was in the Navy for those 31 years. You walked among the crew, you listened to them. At the end of the day, you let them get a cut of your jib. You told them what you were going to do. And even though they didn't always agree with you, you went back and forth and kept doing what was right. You didn't let them think you were making a decision for your job or to have a majority, or to kind of have a compromise of principle. I don't mind principled compromises, but we were compromising our principles down there. And so what I, when I stood up to my party's establishment, that's what I ran on. Look, people appreciate that they don't always want to agree with you, but they don't want to think that you're making a deal with a health insurance company or a Republican to become a Democrat just to get a deal through. They want to know that it's good enough of something to do that you don't have to do it by conviction and by making principled compromise. And we did compromise principles that we could get through and make sure that people understood why that bill that eventually came out, the health care bill, was a good bill.
Now, you've also said, uh, based on your 31 years in the Navy, a commander of an aircraft carrier, everyone in the military is a Democrat. They just don't know it. Uh, I guess that means the absentee yes, ballots that are going to come into Pennsylvania from the military are going to be good for you. What, what did you mean by that? Everyone in the military is a Democrat. They just don't know it. We all had health care in the military. And we did it because it paid dividends to this nation of healthy, productive warriors. Like when I was on the ground for a short mission in Afghanistan, there were healthy warriors there. And we didn't leave the military to go somewhere else in order to get health insurance for our children, our families. And we don't promote you above a certain rank unless you have a certain degree in education. Come on in, learn a skill, have a pension. And so I said, everyone's a military, is a Democrat. They just don't know it because we invest in our people. But what we also do in the military is hold that investment, our people accountable for the responsibilities, those wonderful men and women. And that's what I think is the best of both sides. So when the Republican Senator Hagel endorsed me, you know, we don't necessarily agree on anything. We can do a principal compromise, find out how best to invest in our people, in their health, their education, their economic securities, but hold that investment accountable. And so that's what I meant. And those two attributes, like we did during the Clinton era, those were the best way to move our nation forward. And we created 23 million jobs during that period. During the Bush-Toomey era, zero jobs. And doubled our national debt. Congressman Joe Sestak, the Democratic Party's healthy warrior in Pennsylvania, thank you very much for taking time on the campaign trail tonight to join us. Thanks, Lawrence. Always a pleasure. Have a great one.